Hi everybody, I'm Lights Camera Jackson. It's Monday, December 10, 2018, and that means it's time for the 2019 Critics' Choice Awards nominations. We are live, and I've got the breaking news right now. The Favorite leads all Critics' Choice nominations with 14, 14 nominations for The Favorite, which I believe ties some kind of record that I got a little thing over here for Lincoln getting that several years ago. So, uh, and La La Land, I believe, got 14 as well several years ago. So congrats to the favorite right now, leading all Critics' Choice nominations with 14. Now, we're going to go through every single category, send in your questions, your comments, your reactions to every single category we're going to go through for the Critics' Choice Awards. If you are a BFCA member, this is a great time to join me right now on this conversation as we talk about the Critics' Choice Awards nominations. So the favorite is leading the way with 14. Let's go through right now the other ones. Looks like Black Panther got 12 First Man with 10. Again, I'm reading all these for the first time right here with you guys right now. Mary Poppins Returns, Star is Born, and Vice with nine nominations each. Roma with eight nominations. Uh, Green Book picks up seven. So let's go right now to Best Picture of the Year for the Critics' Choice Awards. Nominations are Black Panther, Black Klansman, The Favorite, First Man, Green Book, Beale Street Could Talk, Mary Poppins Returns, Roma, Star is Born, and Vice. Those are your 10 nominees for Best Picture of the Year this year at the Critics' Choice Awards. Can't say I'm surprised by any of them, but it is nice to see First Man in the equation because it got really snubbed by the Golden Globes the other day. So First Man is in the equation. Also glad to see Mary Poppins Returns getting some nominations. Glad that my fellow BFCA members voted for that. Look, we still haven't been able to put out our Mary Poppins reviews yet. Finally, the embargo lifts on Wednesday at noon Eastern, and I'm so excited to finally be able to share my full review of Mary Poppins Returns on Wednesday. Just gotta wait two more days. Again, send in your questions, your comments on some of these nominations. Let's go to Best Actor in a Leading Role. The nominees are Christian Bale for Vice, Bradley Cooper, A Star is Born, Willem Dafoe at Eternity's Gate, Ryan Gosling, First Man. Ethan Hawke. There you go. Here's Ethan Hawke for you because he didn't get a Golden Globe nomination and now he is up for um, he is up for Best Actor for his performance in First Reformed. Rami Malek, Bohemian Rhapsody, my personal favorite in this category, and Viggo Mortensen for Green Book. Just going to check and make sure the stream's still going because it's not showing up on my, on my uh, phone there. I think we're still good. I think we're still okay. All right, let's go right now. Uh, glad to see uh, Ethan Hawke got in the equation, though. Best Actress, Yalizia Aparicio for Roma. She's getting a lot of attention for this performance. Then there's Emily Blunt, Mary Poppins Returns, Glenn Close for The Wife. I think she was a lock to get a nomination today. Here comes Tony Collette for Hereditary, Olivia Coleman for The Favorite, Lady Gaga, A Star is Born, and a big surprise, making it seven, Melissa McCarthy. Can you ever forgive me? Melissa McCarthy has been nominated for so many Critics' Choice Awards in the past in the lead actress in a comedy category that now she's finally in the regular lead actress category for her performance in Can You Ever Forgive Me? Best Supporting Actor, Motion Picture, Mahershala Ali, Green Book, Timothy Chalamet, Beautiful Boy, Adam Driver, Black Klansman, there you go, Sam Elliott, A Star is Born. He got snubbed the other day. Now he's in this category. Also got Richard E. Grant, Can You Ever Forgive Me? And wow, Michael B. Jordan for Black Panther. Michael B. Jordan and Disney and Marvel actually sent uh, a little video the other day to all the members, maybe hoping Michael B. Jordan would be in this category, and he is, holy cow, Michael B. Jordan. Best performance by an actress in a supporting role. Amy Adams, Vice, Claire Foy, First Man. There you go. Nicole Kidman, Boy Erased. I'm telling you, she's coming for two nominations this year. But look, Nicole Kidman got snubbed for Destroyer. Wow. Nicole Kidman got snubbed for Destroyer for lead actress, but she did get a nomination for supporting actress for Boy Erased. Wow. Regina King, if Beale Street could talk, and Emma Stone and Rachel Vice for The Favorite. Okay. Best Young Actor or Actress, Elsie Fisher, 8th grade. Thomasin McKenzie, Leave No Trace. Ed Oxenbold, he was good in Wildlife. Uh, Millicent Simmons from the, uh, Quiet Place. Amanda Stenberg, The Hate You Give. And Sonny Suljic, The Little Boy in Mid-90s. 
Uh, performance by a cast in a motion picture, Black Panther. Crazy Rich Asians. I think that's getting a SAG nomination on Wednesday, too. The Favorite, Vice, and Widows. All right. Once again, send in your questions, your comments on these Critics' Choice nominations. We got right here, right now, live. Best Director, Motion Picture. Damien Chazelle for First Man. They're giving some First Man some love, some much-needed love. Bradley Cooper, Star is Born. Alfonso Cuaron, Roma. Peter Farrelly for Green Book. Man, I didn't think Peter Farrelly was going to get these director nominations, even when I saw Green Book. Because, maybe because, oh, he's made all these comedies, maybe be hesitant to give it. And it's really not a director's movie. Yorgos Lanthimos, the favorite. Spike Lee for Black Klansman. Whoa, a lot of people are going to want pictures with Spike if he's there. And Adam McKay for Vice. I was hoping Rob Marshall would get in there for Mary Poppins. Maybe that'll be an Academy surprise. Best Original Screenplay Motion Picture, Bo Burnham, 8th Grade, Alfonso Cuaron for Roma. Roma's getting so many nominations. Uh, the team for The Favorite, Adam McKay for Vice, Paul Schrader, First Reformed, uh, the team from Green Book, and the team from A Quiet Place gets a Best Original Screenplay nomination. That makes seven in that category as well. I had a major problem with A Quiet Place. How did this couple decide to have the kid under these circumstances? That really is what did it for me uh, and why I didn't choose to vote for A Quiet Place for this category. Best Adapted Screenplay, Black Panther, Can You Ever Forgive Me, If Beale Street Could Talk, A Star Is Born, First Man, and Black Klansman. Those are your Adapted Screenplay nominees. Academy Picks says, in your opinion, overall biggest surprise, biggest omission. You look at that Best Actress category right now. Nicole Kidman is not in there for Destroyer. Julia Roberts is still not in there for Ben is Back. Uh, yeah, this Lead Actress category. Elsie Fisher uh, is in Young Actor, Actress, but she didn't get in the regular Lead Actress category. There's a lot there so far in that category. But again, we're going through right now all the categories for the Critics' Choice Awards. Send in your questions, your comments, your reactions. I'm giving you my live, instant-take reactions on all of these nominations. Cinematography, Roma, Beale Street Could Talk, Star is Born, Black Panther, the Favorite, and First Man. First Man definitely deserves to be in that category. I can see A Star is Born and Roma, certainly, for cinematography. Black Panther, look, the critics seem to love Black Panther, putting it in nearly every category so far. Best Production Design. You've got Black Panther, Roma, Crazy Rich Asians. How about that? Uh, also, The Favorite. First Man, and there's Mary Poppins Returns, one of probably several technical categories that will hopefully be up for. Crazy Rich Asians is the surprise in this case. Maybe we'll see that for some more award shows down the line the rest of this award season. It is a very elegant movie, and so I can understand the costumes were also really nice in Crazy Rich Asians too. So there you go, your production design nominees. Film editing. Wow. Okay. Widows is in the equation for film editing. That's on the ballot. Widows is a heist movie. I think this is the first appearance of Widows today because Widows is not even in the best... Uh, oh, it is in the acting ensemble category. All right, so second appearance today for Widows, but no individual acting nominations for Viola or Daniel Kaluuya, Colin Farrell, anybody like that. But you've got Widows, also The Favorite, Roma, First Man, Vice, and a star is born. We're seeing a pattern here. A lot of the same movies coming in all these different categories. Definitely a lot of the same ones. All right. Best costume design. Mary Queen of Scots. Mary Queen of Scots did not get sent out to Critics' Choice members. Focus Features decided, you know what? We're not going to send out screeners of this movie. We want you to experience it on the big screen. Well, for people who don't live in New York City or Los Angeles, that's very tough. So, But Mary Queen of Scots still gets a Best Costume Design nomination, joining Black Panther, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, and Mary Poppins Returns. There's Bohemian Rhapsody. I think the costumes in Bohemian are fantastic. They deserve to be in this category. Not a bad few other choices as well. I like the costumes in Black Panther and certainly Mary Poppins Returns and very elegant in The Favorite. Best Hair and Makeup. Looks like six nominees in this category. Black Panther, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Here Comes Mary Queen of Scots again, 
Suspiria and Vice. Suspiria is that crazy movie from Amazon, a two and a half hour one that came out in October. And let me tell you, they were campaigning so hard for this nomination, sending us booklet after booklet and, and for your consideration materials just for the makeup team alone to get Suspiria that nomination. Hey, it worked. Thanks for joining us at Gab underscore Mead, looking at the nominations for this year's Critics' Choice Awards. All right, visual effects time. We could see a lot of action movies, and it looks like we do. Avengers Infinity War. I thought this could have been up for uh, Best Acting Ensemble as well, but it looks like so far just visual effects. Black Panther, First Man, Mary Poppins, Mission Impossible Fallout for visual effects. That's an interesting choice for, for visuals. And Ready Player One, one of the best movies of the year. Glad to see that that is in this category. Wow. Animated feature. And the first movie staring me in the face is The Grinch. Universal and Illumination are over the moon right now with this nomination. The Grinch did not get an Annie Awards nomination, nor did it get a Golden Globe nomination. So we have six nominees this year. The other five are the pretty much standard five. The Grinch getting in there is a huge surprise. You've got Incredibles 2. Isle of Dogs, Mirai, Ralph Breaks the Internet, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. That seems to be the core five. Other ones like Early Man Sneaking In at the Annie Awards, or today The Grinch. Uh, big, big surprise there. I would say those other five, if they're not the Academy Award nominees for Animated Feature, if one of them gets taken out, it will be a huge surprise. One of the bigger surprises of that day. Wow, The Grinch is an Animated Feature nominee. Holy cow, did not expect that. Best Action Movie, Avengers Infinity War, Black Panther, Deadpool 2. Oh man, we could see Deadpool 2 in the comedy categories too. Mission Impossible Fallout, Ready Player One, glad to see that. And Widows is in the Best Action Movie category. I don't know if Steve McQueen was expecting that, but he got Widows into the Best Action Movie category. Best Comedy of the Year, like I said, Deadpool 2 is there joining Crazy Rich Asians. The Death of Stalin. Wow. The Favorite. Yeah, The Favorite's a comedy. It's a dark comedy. There's some drama there. Yeah. Game Night. That came out so early in the year. I don't know how people remembered that. And Sorry to Bother You, which came out in the summertime. Game Night's a big surprise. Uh, I didn't really like Game Night. And I thought Sorry to Bother You was alright, but I kind of liked it less as I thought about it over the rest of the year. Now, this is interesting. Okay, so... Vice isn't up for Best Comedy, but yet Christian Bale is nominated for Best Actor in a Comedy for Vice. Wow, okay. Same with Green Book. Viggo Mortensen nominated Best Actor in a Comedy. Green Book not nominated for Best Comedy. Where's the correlation there? Wow, all right. Jason Bateman for Game Night joins them along with John C. Riley for Stan and Ollie, his second nomination now after the Globes. Ryan Reynolds for Deadpool 2 and Lakeith Stanfield for Sorry to Bother You. Yeah, that's definitely a wacky category correlation. Wow! And then Best Actress in a Comedy which starts off with Emily Blunt for Mary Poppins Returns. Here's the thing. Mary Poppins Returns is... It's light in places, but it is not a straight comedy. There's a lot of emotion and drama to it. Yes, it's a fantastical musical with some humorous aspects throughout all that, but it is not a straightforward comedy. And again, where's the correlation? Where does that go? Uh for that not being in the regular best comedy category. Olivia Coleman for The Favorite. Elsie Fisher for 8th Grade gets in that category too, just like young actor-actress. Rachel McAdams for uh, Game Night. Charlize Theron gets another nomination for Tully. And Constance Wu for Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, definitely some interesting choices by some of the voters, some of which I really don't honestly agree with. Best Sci-Fi or Horror Movie. So glad. This is one of the best movies of the year. Came out so early in the year. Glad to see it gets in this category. Annihilation. Natalie Portman. I think Natalie Portman is better in this movie than she is in Vox Lux. She's getting a lot of attention for Vox Lux, though she did not get another nomination today for that. But she's really good at Annihilation. So is Jennifer Jason Lee. Halloween. Also thrilled to see that on the list. I think Jamie Lee Curtis should be in the Best Supporting Actress conversation. Why nobody is bringing that up blows my mind. Hereditary joins A Quiet Place and Suspiria for Best Sci-Fi Horror Movie nominations. Foreign Language Film, Burning, Capernaum, this is a great movie that didn't get a Golden Globe nomination the other day. Glad it's up for the Critics' Choice. Cold War, really good romance. Joining Roma 
and Shoplifters for your Best Foreign Language Film Critics' Choice Awards nominations. What's up, Wiki Patera? Thanks for joining us here on this special LCJ Live where we're going through the instant reactions right now to the Critics' Choice Awards nominations. All right, Best Song. All the stars from Black Panther, Girl in the Movies, the great Dolly Parton song from Dumplin' is there. I'll Fight from the Ruth Bader Ginsburg documentary, RBG. Wow, Felicity Jones did not get nominated today for playing Ruth Bader Ginsburg and On the Basis of Sex. It's a good performance. People gotta see this movie. Shallow from A Star is Born, and then not one, but two Mary Poppins songs making up for the fact that no Mary Poppins song got nominated for the Globe. Two of them, Triple Little Light Fantastic and my personal favorite, The Place Where Lost Things Go, are nominated for Best Original Song. Best Score in a Motion Picture, Green Book, If Beale Street Could Talk, Alexandra Desplat for Isle of Dogs, Black Panther, Justin Hurwitz for First Man, Well Deserved, and Mark Shaman for Mary Poppins Returns, very well deserved, and that's a great way to finish out these movie categories. So, wow, these are your movie categories for the 2019 Critics' Choice Awards. Again, the favorite leads with 14 nominations, uh, followed by Black Panther with 12, First Man with 10. Remember, it only got two Golden Globe nominations the other day. Mary Poppins Returns, A Star is Born, and Vice with 9, uh, Roma with 8, and Green Book with seven. And your Best Picture nominees, once again, Black Panther and Black Klansman. The Favorite, First Man, Green Book, If Beale Street Could Talk, Mary Poppins Returns, Roma, A Star is Born, and Vice. When you look at the ten nominees for Best Picture, none of them seem outrageous. Five years ago, you might have thought Black Panther seemed outrageous, but where we are now culturally, it makes complete sense. I think the biggest one here, earliest in the year release-wise, besides Black Panther, is Black Klansman because it came out in August. And so Focus Features was hoping maybe there would be a chance that it could get into this category. And it does because Critics' Choice does 10 nominations guaranteed for Best Picture of the Year. So uh, there you go for that. And looks like Best Actor and Best Actress have seven nominations each. The Supportings have six. Young Actor has six, Animated Feature has six, including The Grinch, which I, again, think one of the biggest surprises of the day, and seven nominees for Best Director. So a lot going on here with these Critics' Choice Awards nominations. Uh, I am going to move on to television because I want to make sure the TV uh, fans get a little love for TV. So let's go to the television nominations now for the Critics' Choice Awards. I only vote for the movie categories, but I always like seeing the stars of the TV shows there, certainly, and also seeing what my fellow uh, Critics' Choice members in the television division, the Broadcast uh, Television Journalists Association, did with their nominations. So if you have any questions or comments, send them in. Why do some categories have more than five? Critics' Choice standard has been six. We've always sort of been like that. Um, so most of the main categories would have a minimum of six. If there are ties, it goes to seven. That happened last year with actor and supporting actress. This year it seems to happen with actor and lead actress uh, and director. Um, so clearly there were some ties. There's only about 300 of us who vote for these awards. And so ties, I guess, could be rare, but maybe not so rare. And six nominees for uh, animated film shows there was probably a tie, too, because we haven't always had six nominations for Best Animated Feature. That's only happened a couple times in the last several years. So, yeah, that's just kind of where it is, at Moat87, thanks for joining us here. Critics' Choice Awards nomination reactions live. We're going to move over to TV, and then we'll swing on back to for some final thoughts on the movie categories. Drama series. Wow, a lot of nominations. The Americans, Better Call Saul, The Good Fight, Homecoming. There's your Julia Roberts nomination, probably. Yes, Julia Roberts is nominated Best Actress in a Drama Series for Homecoming. Not nominated for Ben Is Back which I think is a well-deserved nomination in the lead actress uh, category. Hope maybe she'll get it for a different award show coming up. Killing Eve, My Brilliant Friend, Pose, and Succession. How many is that? Eight! Best Drama Series nominations. Wow. All right, Best Actor, Drama Series. Freddie Highmore for The Good Doctor. Diego Luna for Narcos. Richard Madden for Bodyguard. I think he's the guy from Cinderella uh, a few years ago. Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul. Met him at Critics' Choice a few years ago. Really nice guy. Billy Porter for Pose. 
Matthew Reese, the Americans, and Milo Ventimiglia for This Is Us, lead actress drama series. Jodie Comer, Killing Eve, Maggie Gyllenhaal, The Deuce on HBO, that's the James Franco show. Elizabeth Moss, Handmaid's Tale. Sandra Oh, Killing Eve, she's your Golden Globes co-host with Andy Samberg. Elizabeth Olsen, Sorry for Your Loss, that's on Facebook Watch. Facebook Watch gets a Critics' Choice nomination. Where have we come to? Wow! Julia Roberts, Homecoming, and Carrie Russell for The Americans. Supporting Actor Drama Series, Richard Cabral for Mayans. Asia Kate Dillon, Billions. Noah Emmerich, The Americans. Justin Hartley, very good on This Is Us. Matthew McFadden, Succession. Richard Schiff for The Good Doctor. And uh, Shea Wiggum for Homecoming, which is on Amazon. That's the Julia Roberts show. Supporting Actress Drama Series, Dina Shahabi for Jack Ryan. No John Krasinski in that lead actor category, but he still gets nominated for Original Screenplay for A Quiet Place. Julia Garner, Ozark. Thandie Newton, she's won Emmy, right? Westworld. Rhea Seahorn, Better Call Saul. Yvonne Strahovski for The Handmaid's Tale. And Holly Taylor for The Americans. Comedy Series, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wow, I am thrilled. Congratulations for its final season that The Middle is nominated for Best Comedy Series. That is terrific. It's got some tough competition, though. Atlanta, Barry, The Good Place, The Kaminsky Method, which is that Alan Arkin, Michael Douglas show, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, One Day at a Time, and Schitt's Creek, yes, I can say that and get away with it, are your Best Comedy Series nominations. But again, if you're a fan of The Middle like I am, you are overjoyed right now that it is nominated for Best Comedy Series. That should happen at the Emmys, too. Best Actor, Comedy Series, Hank Azaria for Brock Meyer, Ted Dance in The Good Place, Michael Douglas for The Kaminsky Method, Donald Glover, Atlanta, Bill Hader for Barry, Jim Parsons, Big Bang Theory, and your co-Golden Globes host, Andy Samberg for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Best Actress in a Comedy Series, well, The Middle got nominated for comedy. Unfortunately, no Patricia Heaton, it looks like, but Rachel Bloom, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Rachel Brosnahan, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Allison Janney, last year's Supporting Actress Film winner for I, Tanya, nominated for Mom. Justina Machado, One Day at a Time. Deborah Messing for Will and & Grace. And Issa Rae for Insecure. <clears throat> Let's go to Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series. William Jackson Harper for The Good Place. Sean Hayes, so funny and a great producer of Hollywood Game Night, nominated for Will and Grace. Brian Tyree Henry for Atlanta. Brian Tyree Henry has had a big movie year. He's in Spider-Man. He's in Widows. He's in If Beale Street Could Talk. He's in a couple other movies. He's nominated for Atlanta. Nico Santos, great in Crazy Rich Asians, also nominated for Superstore. Tony Shalhoub, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and Henry Winkler, your Emmy winner for Barry. Supporting Actress, Comedy Series. Alex Borstein, she won the Emmy. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Betty Gilpin for Glow. Laurie Metcalf, last year's nominee for Lady Bird for The Connors. Rita Moreno, One Day at a Time. Zoe Perry, Young Sheldon. Annie Potts for Young Sheldon. And Miriam Shore for Younger. The TV Land Show, also with Hilary Duff, gets a nomination for Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series. We're going right now through the Critics' Choice nominations. We did movies. Now we'll go to TV. Of course, uh, HBO and Netflix looks like time with 20 nominations each in the TV categories. That is big. That's a good battle. The HBO-Netflix battle, that seems to be what is the case uh, for streaming eyeballs these days. Limited Series, a very English scandal. American Vandal, American Crime Story for Gianni Versace, Escape at Danamora. Escape at Danamora happened not that far away from where I am right now and where I live. Uh, it was a big deal a few years ago when that really went down, the prison escape, and now Ben Stiller has made this into a now Critics' Choice nominated limited series. Genius Picasso, so good. I hope Antonio Banderas, yes, he is nominated. I can see that. And Sharp Objects, the Amy Adams show from HBO. Film made for television. Icebox, Jesus Christ Superstar Live in Concert with John Legend, King Lear, My Dinner with Hervé, Notes from the Field, and The Tale are your made, movies made for TV. Let's go to actor. Man, I hope I get to meet Antonio Banderas. He's so good in Genius Picasso. Darren Criss for Gianni Versace, Escape at Dan Amora, Paul Dano, and Benicio Del Toro are nominated, along with Hugh Grant for A Very English Scandal, and John Legend for Jesus Christ Superstar Live in Concert. Double nominee today, Supporting Actress Vice, Lead Actress, 
limited series or film made for television. Amy Adams, Sharp Objects. Patricia Arquette for Dan Amora. Connie Britton, Dirty John. That just started recently on Bravo. Uh, Carrie Coon for The Sinner. Laura Dern for The Tale. And Anna Devere Smith, Notes from the Field. We go right now more. Supporting actor, Brandon Victor Dixon for Jesus Christ Superstar. Eric Lang, Escape of Dana Mora. Alex Rich. Ah, uh, he is so good in Genius Picasso. Just met him. Uh, the Critics' Choice uh, Documentary Awards. He was great to meet. I'll post that picture a little bit later, I think. Peter Sarsgaard, Looming Tower. Finn Whitrock, Gianni Versace, and Ben Wishaw. Very English scandal. Ben Wishaw is also in Mary Poppins Returns. He plays the grown-up Michael Banks. He's really good. Best Supporting Actress, Limited Series, Movie Made for TV, Ellen Burstyn, The Tale, Patricia Clarkson, Sharp Objects, Penelope Cruz and Judith Light for Gianni Versace, Julia Garner for Dirty John and Elizabeth Perkins for Sharp Objects on HBO. And then, Animated Series. Wow, your Animated Series nominees, Adventure Time, Cartoon Network, Archer, FX, Bob's Burgers and The Simpsons on Fox, BoJack Horseman on Netflix, and who doesn't love South Park on Comedy Central? So those are your Critics' Choice Television Awards uh, nominations. But I don't think that's every category. I think I'm going to have to go to a different place unless they got rid of some categories. They're definitely usually reality show, reality host. I do think they want to, though, move that now to their brand new Critics' Choice Real TV Awards that they're starting up in June. They're going to honor reality television uh, with their own award show. It's a really interesting concept. We'll see how much legs it has, but um, it looks like that may be where some of those normal categories, like the uh, reality show host, competition, things like that, looks like that's where they're going to go. So these are the Critics' Choice Awards nominations for this year. Again, HBO and Netflix tying with 20 nominations each in terms of television and in terms of movies. The favorite leads the way with 14 nominations. The favorite is not my favorite movie of 2018 by a lot. Yes, good performances by Olivia Colman and Rachel Weisz and Emma Stone, well-deserved nominations. Technically, you know, the costumes, the production design, it's at least up for costume. I think it's up for production uh, design as well. Uh, I believe it is. Yes, it is. But... I wasn't a huge fan of the screenplay. Not a huge fan of the screenplay for this movie. It's a little cutesy, a little overly funny, a little too clever in a lot of cases. So, I guess the overwhelming response, though, is The Favorite. Do I think The Favorite's going to win Best Picture of the Year, Critics' Choice? No. I'd be surprised if The Favorite ended up winning Best Picture. You have a much better chance seeing a film like A Star is Born, maybe even Black Panther, which is kind of crazy, but it's kind of not. Roma, winning Best Picture, I could see happening. Uh, even Green Book. To me, when you look at the 10 nominees for Best Picture, as far as chances of winning, it seems to me like the favorite is in the bottom half, yet it has the most nominations. And last year, the most nominations went to The Shape of Water, a film that a lot of people thought wasn't an instant winner for the Best Picture category, and it won our Critics' Choice Award for Best Picture before going on to win the Academy Award for Best Picture. So that's really interesting to see. A little surprised by that. Uh, and then when you look at the acting categories again, Ethan Hawke getting in and Tony Collette getting in in the lead acting categories, uh, A24 is thrilled out of their minds. Already mentioned Amy Adams, of course, a double nominee again for Vice and Sharp Objects. And then Julia Garner nominated for her two roles, Dirty John and Ozark. You're going to see a lot of double nominees uh, this year, it looks like, including Elsie Fisher. Elsie Fisher nominated for a lead actress in a comedy movie and young actor or actress for a great performance in eighth grade. I wish Josh Hamilton, who plays her dad in the movie, got in the supporting actor category because that would have been well-deserved. What's up, at Fico Cangiano? Thanks for joining us here as we talk about the Critics' Choice Awards nominations. The show is Sunday, January 13th, from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern. It's three hours live on The CW. As a matter of fact, uh, I was talking with the president of our association, Joey Berlin, and he said he 
called up and went to every single CW outlet out there and said, can we have the extra hour of time so we can do a three hour live show? And they said, yes, it's the brand new CW Sunday night that we are a part of and so proud of it. 7 to 10 p.m. live, Eastern time, Sunday, January 13th. Mark your calendars because it's going to be a show you're, you're going to want to watch. We don't have a host yet. But I'm thinking that might happen in the next couple of weeks or so. Hopefully get somebody big to host this year's Critics' Choice Awards. Again, The Favorite leads the way with 14 nominations, 12 for Black Panther, Universal's First Man with 10, Mary Poppins Returns, Star is Born and Vice with 9, Roma with 8, and Green Book with 7. And again, as you go through the full list a little bit later when we're done here on LCJ Live, you'll see... When you look at best comedy movie and the correlation, you get Emily Blunt nominated for Mary Poppins, but the film's not up for comedy. Same with Green Book, same with Vice. Really interesting to see how the voting went with there. There were no set guidelines that said you couldn't vote for this person for best actor in a comedy. You couldn't vote for this person for best actress and then not correlate it with best comedy. It's just how the voting ended up. But yeah, uh, if I had to pick some surprises today as far as what got in, I'd say The Grinch. I would say Nicole Kidman for Boy Erased, but not for Destroyer. That's a surprise. I would also say Widows for Editing, because that was not a guarantee. Mary Queen of Scots getting up for costume design as well as hair and makeup, especially considering, again, Focus did not send out screeners to us of this movie. Uh, Suspiria getting those nominations was not easy either. Uh, choo -choo -choo. Deadpool 2 getting in the act, uh, action movie and comedy. Death of Stalin getting in comedy. Game Night going all the way back to February for that. There were some other good comedies this year. Uh, Instant Family just came out. Really good comedy. Uh, Uncle Drew, Super Troopers 2, Book Club. There was some good. Mamma Mia. I wish Mamma Mia got in because it deserved something. Uh, yeah, Stan and Ollie, John C. Riley getting in, in again. That may have been just some, ooh, we got the globe, let's put him in for there. Not one of my favorite lead actor in a comedy performances of the year. It's honestly not. Uh, sorry to bother you. Really haven't heard about that movie in a while. Uh, very glad to see Annihilation and Halloween getting in that horror movie category. Mary Poppins Returns getting both songs in. Also not easy, especially when it got zero at the Globes for song. Uh, yeah, those are the ones that stand out to me. If you're game night, you are thrilled today. You are over the moon. Best action movie, Mission Impossible, Fallout. We used to do Best Actor and Actress in an Action Movie categories, and then the upper administration at Critics' Choice decided to get rid of them starting last year. I wasn't thrilled with that decision, because last year, in that Lead Actor in an Action Movie category, you would have had Andy Serkis for Planet of the Apes and Hugh Jackman for Logan, and probably Hugh Jackman would have won for honoring him for the 17 years he played Wolverine Logan, and it would have been a great moment. In order to create a great award show, you need to create moments. And that would have been a moment. But unfortunately, they got rid of those categories. You know darn well Tom Cruise would have been nominated for Best Actor in an Action Movie. He probably would have showed up, and he probably would have won for Mission Impossible because everybody loves all the stunts that he does for these Mission Impossible movies. What a moment that would have been. I'd like to see those categories come back next year. Hopefully that'll happen for the Critics' Choice Awards. But until then, we have this set of nominations for this year's 2019 Critics' Choice Awards. Again, Sunday. January 13th, 2019, just a few weeks away into next year, at 7 p.m. Eastern on The CW. The favorite leads your film nominations. HBO and Netflix lead your television nominations. The full list and the full information is up all over social media today, as well as CriticsChoice.com if you need extra information. Tonza190, thanks for being here as we talk about these Critics' Choice Awards nominations. It's a big day for a lot of movies, a lot of actors, a lot of people with double nominations like Christian Bale for Vice, Emily Blunt for Mary Poppins Returns getting two nominations. That was not guaranteed. She wasn't even guaranteed to get one because Mary Poppins Returns really isn't a full comedy and she wasn't guaranteed to get in that lead actress category. The fact that Yalitza Aparicio from uh, Roma got in lead actress is a surprise. Glenn Close is not. Tony Collette is not. Olivia Colman, Gaga. Melissa McCarthy has got to be thrilled as well. Because she took out Rosamund Pike, Julia Roberts, Natalie Portman, uh, Carrie Mulligan, uh, and the list goes on and on. There's a lot of lead actresses this year who didn't get into that category. Uh, so yeah. Wow. Okay.
Willem Dafoe getting in for Anna Turney's Gate, I'm happy with. So is Rami Malek. Sam Elliott getting in for A Star is Born. Black Panther, Michael B. Jordan in Supporting Actor. That's a surprise. Supporting Actress is your five from the Globes, plus Nicole Kidman for Boy Erased. Director? Yeah, some of them are going to get snubbed for the Academy Awards, certainly, but these seven aren't outrageous. Uh, acting Ensemble? Crazy Rich Asians, maybe the surprise, but it's not too much to me. Quiet Place original screenplay. That's big. So clear, So there are seven original screenplay nominees and six adapted screenplay nominees. Again, lots of ties, clearly. There seem to be a lot of ties. There's only 300 of us, but there seem to be a lot of them. Well, over these last couple of years, I've noticed. Um, looks like six in a lot of these other categories. But, just, but then you get just five in costume design. So clearly there's some limitations on certain number of votes you need, certain number of things you need in order to qualify. Five for costume design. Who wins costume design? People may pick the favorite. A lot of people may just vote for Black Panther just to vote for Black Panther. I could see that happening. People will get really behind it. I'll just vote for Black Panther. Okay. You do you. Hair and makeup, six nominations. Visual effects, six nominations. Good to see Ready Player One. One of the best movies of the year. Ready Player One is in that category along with Avengers Infinity War. Again, animated feature with six, uh, including The Grinch. Action movie, six. Comedy with six. Yeah, it seems like six and seven is our theme today. Favorite with 14, HBO and Netflix with 20. If you want the full list of nominations, go to CriticsChoice.com. Look all over your social media. And I'm going to have more analysis and more posts later today because this is a big deal for our 24th annual Critics' Choice Awards, Sunday, January 13th, 7 p.m. Eastern, on The CW. I am Broadcast Film Critics Association member Jackson Murphy, Lights Camera Jackson. I am so proud to be a member, so excited to vote once again for this show, and so excited to be able to go to this show once again for my seventh Critics' Choice Awards. Really excited about it. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's episode, special edition of LCJ Live with live analysis of the Critics' Choice Awards nominations. I'll see you Sunday at noon Eastern for our regular show. We'll talk about the Spider-Man box office along with The Mule with Clint Eastwood. Maybe some reaction to the SAG Awards nominations, which come out this Wednesday at 10 a.m. And then we preview how Mary Poppins Returns with nine Critics' Choice nominations, including Best Picture of the Year, is going to do at the box office. I'll see you Sunday at noon Eastern for another new episode of LCJ Live. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.